Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Congratulations. Crazy, crazy. We're here. We're heading. We'll see how we we'll see how we do it. Last episode honestly went really, really, really hard in the paint. I don't like to say that really. It's kind of okay to say, but I said it and uh, said it and forget it. Remember that infomercial? The fucking guy, the Ron Popeil guy who would do the dried meats and he would just put it in the thing and he'd be like, said it and forget it. And they didn't add the part afterwards, which was like, which was, and your house burns down. Can't forget it. You obviously have to turn it off, dude. You can't forget it. That's literally false advertising. You can't forget that you have meats in the oven. Okay. I got an air fryer. So I fucking dude, I leveled the fuck up. Pizza. Even chicken, dude. We put a fucking raw chicken in that air fryer and 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 cooked it up. Dude, that it was so and I don't do this. I don't like to switch languages, but delicioso. Um air fryers are legit, man. Go ahead and reheat, go ahead and reheat pizza in the microwave. Go ahead. Go ahead, you fucking plebeian. Daddy does it with an air fryer all day long. It's like he just ordered the pizza. Hey, did Domino show up? This is me eating my pizza after I fucking... Oh, oh Domino's just must have shown up. Last time I got Domino's, the guy said, dinner? And I said, yeah, it's a little late. He showed up at my door. He said, dinner? I said, yeah, it's a little late, but yeah. Not meaning not that Domino's was too late, but meaning that it was late for me to eat dinner. And he said, it's never too late for Domino's and left. And I was like, oh my God, how fucking happy can you be? How happy can you be to be delivering anything? And I don't even mean as your job, but just to be walking over to someone and passing them something and to be happy. I aspire to that level of fucking just, I mean, just, you know, life's about just, I was thinking, you know, I was looking at this fucking um, 10 comics to watch thing that Variety does uh, for uh, Montreal. And I was looking at that the other day. I had this picture of it with a bunch of us on it and a bunch of the people made it a bunch of the people didn't well, they all kind of made it in their own way but one of the one of them in my class passed away i mean just life took a different it, life was and i was thinking about like wow it's a trip to even look at that now and it's not bad it's just different like the excitement of making it as a comedian i had it right there and i was happy for that and excited for that and i just don't feel that anymore and that's because you know i've made it and life is about different things now you know my career was my most important thing in my life and it's just not anymore my family is and it you know uh so yeah so anyway dude get a fucking air fryer if you want that pizza and um and we got uh, the new merch out, which we came out with it last week. We got the Life Rips, the blue colorway. We have all the different colorways, everyone. We're Ninja, we're Ninja Turtles. But what are we, the fucking Ninja Turtles? We came out with the blue. Oh, God damn it. We came out with the blue. What are we fucking Ninja? What are we fucking Ninja Turtles? We got orange and, and blue and purple. And we got the fucking red. What are we, Ninja Turtles? Dude, are you saying cowabunga when you wear this shit? And we got the uh, this and we got the... Um, so go to crystalia.com and we got the hoodie. I was going to wear it, but dude, it's way too fucking... It's way too stinking hot in here and you know it. It's way too hot in here. Um, uh, yeah, so... Uh, so that... So, yeah, I got an air fryer and I leveled up the game, dude. You got to get an air fryer, man, for real. I got it for Christmas. My friend gave it to me and it was a great useful gift, man. I'm all about useful gifts, you know? I'm all about useful gifts. Like we're building a house right now and it's like, we got to, you know, Kristen's always like, Ooh, wouldn't it be nice? And I'm like, well, what are we going to fucking use it for? Right. And she's like, no, it's just for the vibe. And the, I'm like, the vibe is I want to use it. Right. So we have a little indoor outdoor area. That's good for the summertime. And we also live in Los Angeles and I get to use that. Open or closed, I get double uses. And I'm all about double uses, right? I'm all about double uses. I use the air fryer for fucking pizza and chicken. I mean, I'm it's crazy. I go bonkers with that shit. Anyway, um so yeah, dude. Um so so uh so I don't even remember what the fuck I was talking about before the house, but uh 
yeah, we're building a house. I've said it before on the thing and uh, we're in the wee stages and they're just trying to like, it's going to take like years. Calvin's going to be fucking 25 before the house is even done, but whatever. Uh, it's all good. And um, you can sign up on our Patreon, patreon.com slash Crystalia. And also like and subscribe. It really helps the algorithm and it gets this. This That's the thing, dude. If you're about this fucking cult life, if you're, if you want to be in the log cabin with us and our, and the, with, uh, with, uh, with the babies fucking sitting in high grass, sharing ideas, then, uh, then, then, then share, like, and subscribe and make friends in the comments like always, dude. Um, and support the show, crystalia.com. That's where you get the merch. Anyway, dude, uh, I was at coffee today and, um, you know how I do it. I always do that. And what did I get? Fucking iced Americano dry. Set it and forget it. Oh, that's what I was talking about. Set it and forget it, dude. Infomercials are crazy with the black and white fucking red X over the thing that you're not supposed to do. No, tired of regular knives. Fucking black and white person just, just fucking stabbing themselves right below the jaw. None of that. Um, and then a guy comes in with this new knife. You'll never stab your jaw. Wow. Set it and forget it. Yay. Dude. Um, so, um, yeah, man, uh, I was at the coffee shop today and I got that Americano. I sat down. I was like, well, what the hell am I going to talk about in this podcast? Um, and, uh, some lady came in with like neon green hair. So already I'm like, I'm out, you know, I'm out, dude. Are you, excuse me, ma'am, ma'am, excuse me. Sorry to bother you. Are you an NFT? Hey, ma'am, with the fucking jagged haircut, like you're in, uh, fucking like, like you're, like you're in the matrix, but they wouldn't let you in because you're, you're too fucking happy. <laughs> You know, it's, she looked like fucking rainbow bright in 2022 now. And it's, ma'am, excuse me, ma'am. I, I have a question. Are you Dogecoin? What's going on? Excuse me, ma'am. Is this the metaverse? No. Then shave it and dye it back. Okay. It's like not even, it's like you're, you're you had the kind of, it was kind of the Karen haircut, but it was like. Also, what's the movie with fucking uh, Chris Tucker in The Fifth Element? It was like The Fifth Element. Karen the fifth in the fifth. It was like Karen in the Fifth Element. And it was just neon green. And she was just getting coffee like a person with brown hair. That's the thing, dude. If you got all of this shit, and I mean all of this shit, like nose ring, alternative lifestyle, your tongue is split. And... And the green hair, and it's Karen. You got to go to the coffee shop that's like, have a fucking, be in the metaverse. You want to be a fucking Ethereum so bad. You know what I mean? Go get coffee on the fucking blockchain. Be fake drinking it. Right? Be fake drinking your fucking macchiato on a blockchain. Okay? Karen 3000? It's like... Um, so she's there and already everyone is just like, oh shit, checking the back of their necks for that plug-in. Oh, <laughs> hold on. Okay. No, this is real coffee bean. Cool. And, um, I drink the coffee. It feels real. Okay. Are we on the blockchain, ma'am? And, uh, so, and, and uh, as if that's not enough. And this is, I didn't even mean to talk about all this metaverse shit, but this was the thing that she was doing. Dude, there's always music playing in a coffee shop unless it's Greenblatt's, which fucking closed down and was next to the Laugh Factory. And Greenblatt's was this diner that we, we, we it was unfair what this fucking diner did to us, dude. It was next to the Laugh Factory. I used to go all the time and I used to get that fucking Reuben sandwich with turkey pastrami. And one time, first of all, they brought it and they brought turkey and pastrami and I fucked up, dude. I realize that's my fault because I didn't say turkey pastrami. I said, can I get turkey pastrami? And that's too slow to say that. Okay. It's too, and that's, and that's me. That's my fault. So when they brought it, guess what I did? I ate some of it and then didn't eat the rest. And I didn't send it back because I fucked up. There's rules and I didn't go by them. And the unspoken rules are the more important rules because that shows that you get it. If you abide by the unspoken rules, you get it, dude. You're in 
our matrix, right? And we got our own Karens, right? Like I get you can't rob and steal. I don't do that. But those rules are written. But when you say turkey pastrami and not turkey pastrami, and you get back turkey and pastrami, you failed. Okay? So now when I order that shit, I run it together. I'm like the micro machines man, dude. I'm like, turkey pastrami, can I get a turkey pastrami sandwich? And they say, oh, sure. And if they don't look impressed with how fast I said it, I say, <laughs> you know, I meant turkey pastrami and not turkey and pastrami, right? And they say, oh, yeah. So we win, motherfuckers. We win. Right? I got my own NFT shit in our matrix, in our metaverse. And I know the unspoken rules. So um, what this Greenblatt's did was, and they got real nuts with it, dude. And I didn't even know. It was like, there's this video game I was watching the other day on YouTube. And they uploaded this thing. And I was watching this level. I don't even remember what the hell it was. But the level started and it was like this. I didn't even realize, but halfway through, there was this low-grade music. And then by the time the guy got to the boss of the of that level, the, it was the boss that was playing the, the, the boss that you were fighting was actually playing this organ. And that was where the low-grade music was coming from all along. And I was like, dude, not only did I not even really understand that there was a guy playing an organ throughout this whole video game, I didn't even really understand there was music playing. It drifted in. And now I got to fight this guy, right? I felt had. But Greenblatt's, I would go years and years. And then one day, all of a sudden, my buddy... um who is an animator and just kind of not in the comedian life. He wasn't hooked into our world. Um, he just said, know what's weird about Greenblatt's? While we were eating there and I said, what? And he said, they don't play music. And I never realized I have never been to a fucking diner or a deli that just didn't have some sort of fucking, do you know, bullshit Jack Johnson playing or even like, Enya or fucking what's her name? Uh, what's her fucking Katy Perry? Like they play something, right? You're eating a sandwich. You don't even realize you're eating it to the beat. You know, you're like, you're, you're eating a fucking burrito and you're like, why am I fucking, oh, I'm eating to the beat of the fucking lovely lady lumps or whatever the fuck the song is from black eyed peas. But Greenblatt's had us dude. We were eating and it was like, what is going on? And I realized once once he said, they don't play music, every time I went in, I was like, man, this is so weird, dude. Can you put on some lovely lady lumps, please? <laughs> I'll have the black eyed peas and also play the black eyed peas. Eh, worst joke ever. And so, um, and this is the reason why I bring it up. This is the reason why I bring up this whole thing, I know I got sidetracked into fucking, there were many tentacles in this conversation and many tentacles in this story. And we're, let's just get back to the fucking squid, right? We'll get back to the squid. All right. We're all the arms of the squid. I went off. I started talking about an air fryer. I went off. I started talking about NFTs. I went off. I started talking about the fifth element and all the other things, this, the music of Greenblatt's. But let's get back to the squid. All right. Let's get back to that beak part of the squid. Did you even know that the squid has a beak part? Did you know that? A squid has a fucking beak straight up. Did you know that? Squids have beaks, man. And we're just supposed to be out here living our lives, right? Somebody invented the internet and a fucking toaster and we forgot all about squid beaks, dude. Squids, there's a beak and they shoot out. They wrap you up and they shoot out and they beak you the fuck up in your chest. That's how Steve Irwin died, I think maybe. You know what I mean? They got beaks, dude. Shit underwater, they got beaks, dude. I didn't know that. They're wet birds in there, dude. Just not flying. Just beaking it up, man. Pulling you in, French kissing you. Fucking making your shit all fucked up. Making your shit all lumpy. Making your shit like ground beef with their fucking beak. Just fucking great. You ever see the end of that fucking uh, Prometheus or whatever the fucking movie is where they were that big ass tall white guy that's secretly black? Dude, when they made that movie Prometheus uh, with the fucking guy in it, Michael Fassbender or whatever which is a made up name fastbender but dude when 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 they w at the end when the alien comes out cuz he's been cooking for the whole time in the lab and he comes out and he grabs that big ass albino white black dude dude they tried to make it so that 
do you, if you've seen that movie, you know what I'm talking about. The big ass white dude, he's in the beginning and the end of the movie. Because in the beginning of the movie, and then we go and see how he was fucking made or whatever. The Prometheus movie, it was the, from the Aliens thing. From the Aliens uh, tr- quadruple tr- trilogy. How many Alien movies are there? There's fucking 10 of them. Anyway, there's this big ass dude. He just literally straight up looks like fucking Michael Jordan. It's so racist. So they were like, we got to make him completely albino. You know he wasn't albino in the beginning. But they were like, dude, he looks like a black guy. They're going to come for us. The woke mob is going to come for us. We got to make him white. And they just kept making him whiter and whiter and whiter until he was fucking translucent. And they were like, this is basically it. Anyway, when that fucking, at the end, when the alien comes in and they pull him in, the guy, the white dude is extra strong because he's an alien. But that fucking alien comes in with the tentacles and brings him in all into his fucking mouth pussy and beaks him up, dude. So that's what I'm saying. Let's get back to that beak. What were we talking about, though? What even was the fucking thing I was saying? I was talking about the lady dancing. The reason why I was talking about this whole thing about the fucking thing that happened at Coffee Bean is because all of a sudden this Fifth Element NFT style girl with the Karen haircut from fucking Rainbow Bright, dude, she starts uh, dancing. In the cafe, she starts dancing to the music. And I don't know what they're playing, but she's fucking bobbing. And dude, I, I thought about talking about this on the podcast. And whenever I brought it up, in my head to me while driving or whatever the fuck in the living room, I thought, well, I'm not going to do the dancing because it, it makes me insecure even by myself. Do you know what I'm talking about? People are out there doing shit that makes me insecure, not even doing it for people, but by myself. And they're out there doing it like we're paying them to, right? Have you ever been out at a place like a diner? I was at Amel's Diner once and Busta Rhymes was there, but not being Busta Rhymes, just eating a sandwich. He was being whatever his regular name is, Mr. Rhymes, fucking Jack Rhymes. I don't know what his regular name is, but Busta was just sitting there eating something at Mel's Diner and all of a sudden a lady comes up to him and just starts singing. Like she's going to put his, like he's going to put his fucking turkey pastrami shit down. Sorry, turkey pastrami shit down. And all of a sudden just be like, hold up. Be on the third track of my next album. It's just not going to happen. But people are, but she did it. She's saying like we were paying her for it. When in when actuality, that's not the world we're in right now, right? We're in eating world. We're in the Mel's metaverse. Right? All these different fucking, it's like, figure out where we are and be that way. There's dance clubs. Hey, ma'am. Hi. I don't mean to bug you, and I touched you in real life, so apparently you're not an NFT, but uh, there's dance clubs for that. All right. Take care. But the, what the dancing she was doing was, and I don't even want to do it alone, and I'm alone now, but you guys are going to see this, but this is what the dancing she was doing. She was going like this. Like this, ah, oh, fucking, it's cringy, right? And I'm doing it. And if you're just listening, thank you, by the way. If you're watching, I'm sorry. And if you're listening, thank you and you're welcome. But she was doing it like this, like to, like she had two small cocks, right? Like this, like just jerking them. And she was doing it like this and then leaning her head back a little bit, jerking two cocks and leaning her head back, making the two guys fucking jizz on each other, not her, Right? That's what was happening. Because when you're fucking leaning back and you're doing that, <laughs> jerking through cock, they fucking splash on each other's, right? They fucking, sp- whoopsie, you spunked on his tip. That's what they do. Whoop, not me though. And you, and you lean back with it, right? And so she was leaning back with it, doing the dancing. And then she stopped and then she did the dancing again. And hey, I'm just like, lady, but be in line though. Hey, just be in line. It's one thing to have all the outfit. And then it's another thing to also amp it up with doing all the dancing that you should be doing in a dance club. And that's all I honestly have to say about that. Many, many tentacles, but we got to the beak. It's just, dude, maybe I'm jealous because she was so carefree, right? I think that's the hottest thing a person can be is carefree. I think it's the sexiest, hottest thing a person can be is carefree, right? That's why Pete Davidson is like the fucking man. Get dating everybody. He's dating fucking what's her name? Uh, Mother Teresa next. And she's dead. Dude. And he just because he's so carefree. He's just like, if you ask Pete what's up, he'd be like, I don't know, man. 
Uh, whatever. Hey, but we're at war. Ah, oh, man. Shit, dude. Do you want this? What is that? I don't, it's a, I found it. What is it? It's a thing I just found. Well, what is it? I don't really know, but you want it? You're like, oh, God. All right, let's fuck. Like, that's how carefree is the shit. Girls or guys? Well, why doesn't it matter, though? That, that speaks to my soul. But why doesn't it matter? When something doesn't matter to somebody, <laughs> I feel less than. And, um, and that's hot as shit. And we all need more of that, especially if we want to fucking be sexy, right? And that's what we're all striving to be. Sexy in a coffee shop. Mm. So, uh, yeah, man, I love it. I love it. And by the way, dude, I know I come hard in the, uh, podcast. I know I come hard with it sometimes. And you guys are like, he's a curmudgeon, but I'm not though. Cause I want that lady to do what she does above all else. Do what you do and dress how you want above all else. But also I get to complain and have a good time with it. Right. Those guys out there with fucking ascots. That's way worse. Are those fucking, what are those, like, uh, remember those Taliban scarves that everybody used to wear, like, for nine months? Um, I fucking, I did the King in the Sting, it's out. If you can, you can go watch that. I did King of the Sting, I was with Eric uh, Griffin and Brendan Schaub, and uh, I filled in a little bit because I know Theo couldn't be there, but I was the guest on the couch. Um... And, uh, that was good. We talked, you know, they got a good, they got a good show there. Um, I, I had never watched a full episode. Obviously I've seen clips, but, uh, I saw the, uh, I saw the whole episode that I was in because, uh, but I saw it through my own eyes when I was there. I didn't watch it. Um, so you can check that out. I've been doing a lot of watching though. A lot of watching, I think. You know what I did the other day? I turned on regular TV. I have that. I didn't even know. Flipped the channel and it was like 8, 8.30 or something. And every channel was about like, was about like black people trying to be a, a musician or an artist or something. And it was like, yeah, it was like the networks were trying so hard to not be racist, but also being racist, dude. Like, they're hiring. I know they're hiring people of color to do the people of color shows, right? Is the guy at the head still like some white Jewish guy? Like, why is this happening? Like, I turned on that show Blackage, Black It, Black Itch. Wow, going to fucking hell. I turned on this show Blackish, and the lead guy, his name is Dre. Like, dude. First of all, I thought it was Drake, and I I fell out of my chair. I thought it was Drake. I thought the guy's name was Drake. And then I and then I realized it was Dre. But also that's still like such a big hip hop guy. Like, don't name him that. It's, I mean, I get, okay, people of color, were, I hope they were in charge of this is all I'm saying. And I know they are because I know that guy Kenya Barris did the show or whatever. But I hope what he said goes. Because I just imagine this white dude like at the top that's just like, can we call him Dre? Do you know what I mean? Can we call him? Is it cool if it, we leave everything, but we call him Dre? And they're like, well, I just, I like his name, R Richard. Yeah, but I don't know. I just like Dre. Just not explaining himself. Some white Jewish guy. Yeah, just like Dre. Because this was before, probably this show was on the air before Kenya Barris was Kenya Barris. Is that even his name or am I being racist? Kenya, you know? Um, it's like if a fucking, my name was Denmark. Um, Denmark D'Elia. Uh, <laughs> fucking North Pole Johnson. Uh, so <laughs> for fuck's sake, dude, what's a really white place? Spokane, Spokane Johnson. Um, so, uh, so every, and then I change, change the channel and I know that fucking, that I turn on the show Queen, Queens with Brandy. Who is, I think Brandy, by the way, is, there's something about Brandy that is the most attractive thing. I think Brandy, it's so funny too, because you, like, I looked it up on IMDb to see what the fucking actors and the characters' names were. And it's so funny that on IMDb, they'll be like, it'll be like Brandy and then her last name too. And it's like, oh, okay, it's all official now, right? 
Like fucking, it, it'll be like LL Cool J is in this, but also it's T- James T- Todd Smith. And you're like, oh, 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 <laughs> okay. Right. And uh, so, so I'm watching this fucking show Queens and it was about the R&B rap fucking world. And I'm just like, all right. <laughs> it was just so funny to me that these fucking networks are are like, just trying so hard and i'm not saying it's a bad thing it's a hilarious thing because like i i i I, they don't care they just act like they care because they think their money is affected right and so they make this show called queens and brandy's in it and the fucking two artists that they're that they're that are in the show are Lady Z and Explicit. Uh, hey, name them better. Uh, hey, uh, try a little bit more. Did you give up? Halfway through thinking? Lady Z? (laughs) And explicit? Why don't you just call one of them break? (laughs) Dude, Lady Z! But there's... But there's Jay-Z, though. (laughs) Oh, but there's Exhibit. Explicit, dude. Hello, and what? M- meet your arch rivals, Break and Busta Crimes. <laughs> <laughs> and Foxy Drowned. Dude, it- <laughs> try harder. I'm sure people of color wrote this. So stop being so white, people of color. Dude, it's insane, man. It's insane, dude. Explicit, dude. X to the T. It was, oh, and you, oh, and you better believe it was X split. It wasn't EX, dude. Oh yeah, and we uh, yeah. Hey, what up? I'm, I'm, this is your rapper Explicit, and I got a show on VH1, Pimp My Pride. Uh, try think further dude it's like this whole thing was thrown into an algorithm and it just fired it out the back end are people running these shows what what is going on what what is going on and people are watching it look at the, these are the rest of the names eve plays prof Professor Sex? That's her rap name in it? That's what it says. Jill the Thrill. At least those aren't Lil Muffin. I mean, these would be. But dude, it's just like un it's like. And dude, they're saying shit like, yeah, and it's lit. And dude, these people are 40 in it. Brandy's older than me, you know? Yeah, I'm in the hizzy. Like, what, dude? Who's writing this shit? Like, just, that's that's why it's like, just do you, ABC. Just do what you're doing. You don't have to try to do what you think you should do because it's it fucking, it's that lady dancing in the coffee bean. It's, it's embarrassing, dude. A cringe city. It's like so weird, man. It, 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 I, and I kept flipping the channel. It was it kept being about fucking hip hop producers, dude. Oh my god, dude! It was fucking hilarious. And everything is is turning into that too. It's like, it's so weird. This is fucking so weird, man. And I'm not saying don't ha- like this is. I could so see somebody saying, "Oh, like Chris Lee making fun of fucking oh black people shouldn't be on TV." Like you're a fucking idiot if you think that's what I'm saying. You're a fucking moron. 
That's not what I'm saying. But like, can't like, God, God, it, you know what, dude? It's like, and then and then they go on the other end and they do the fucking what's that movie? The the movie with the fucking all the black cowboys and shit on Netflix, and it's like, oh, okay, never mind. Then they tried to make black people white too and also it didn't work it's like just but of course everyone's reviewing that somebody said the best cast imaginable dude i love how i just saw that billboard on that what's it called the heart of they fall is it that fucking movie and they're like best cast imaginable dude that's the thing that they're running with best cast imaginable and in my head i'm like oh but jiminy cricket and jesus christ i these are they, what do you mean imaginable gregory peck he's dead though sydney Poitier just died i'm imagining him though Oh, cool. You got some guy that was in some movies? I'm imagining Napoleon Bonaparte, though. Best cast imaginable? It At best, best cast alive. But also no, though. Whatever, dude. I'm too fucking... Whatever, bro. It's like, dude, it's just like... Fucking Lady Z, dude. There's just, like, even with the Z, dude. Um, Speaking of rappers, Kodak Black did that thing where he had sex in the fucking box seat. What is Kodak Black, you know? Like, he, I feel like when he goes to a place, he doesn't walk. He just says, okay, and just fucking rolls. He, what shape is he? What is he five tires? <laughs> like what what is, what is what is going on, dude? He's a Simpson. Right? Like if you saw him walk by Homer in the show The Simpsons, you wouldn't even think about it. But in real life, you go, oh, there are my tires. Are you just fucking four trash bags? Like what's what are you who is what is going on, dude? I listened to an interview with him and he, it was so, oh, it was unbelievable, dude. He was just like, you know, you know, I don't even know. But you know, I mean, you're know, talking, man, you're saying it, that's what I'm saying, man. You're like a motherfucker, man. Motherfucker, man. And, and people in the, uh, in the comments were like, huh? And then somebody would be like, fuck you. You don't even get this lifestyle. What lifestyle? The, I don't, <laughs> The I don't hear you lifestyle. I, I you know, and like uh, about being a um, uh, okay, like oh yeah, you're just you're old, you don't get it. That's my favorite thing. You're old, you don't get it. No, what though? That's why I think that people need to to be somebody in society. You need you need to, you don't need to actually do, but you need to be able to do more than one job. You can have one job. Right? As a matter of fact, you should only have one job and do everything for that one job. But you need to be able to do two jobs, different jobs. If you can't, you got to just kind of plug in and be in the metaverse. You can't be walking around. Like, what else the fuck could Kodak Black do? Right? Do you know what I mean? Like some day, tra some, some fucking Wall Street guys, you're like, oh, all you could do is do this shit. Dude, get out. Get, go in a metaverse with Kodak Black. I'm not, it's not a, you know what I mean? Maybe we want to just wear the ski mask and the fucking branch camouflage at the morning show or whatever the hell that See the God show is. That's the, the level of camouflage I need to get though. When they started doing the branch camouflage, I got boots with the branch camouflage on it, dude. Fuck leaves. I got branches on that shit. That's the level of camouflage. But man, it's so funny, man. I, I don't know what interview it was, but they were like, and the interviewer was like, what you mean, no? And he was like, <laughs> people under it, what did he say? Next guy under that, you just ain't about that life. Guess not, dude. Guess I'm about a different life. <laughs> you know? I love that. You're old, bro. You don't get it. Yeah, yo, 
I love that shit where it's like, oh, dude, he's. That's my favorite thing, dude. Not like when I post a fucking video. One of the things is like, oh man, dude, what's this guy know? He's in his forties, or he, what is he, forty-five or fifty? And it's like, dude, how is that a diss? It's good to get old. You did it. You made it. Some people die first. That's worse, right? I don't want to be dying. I want to be living. I want to keep living. 80, 90, 100. I want to keep going. Oh, yeah, but that dude's old. I guess people don't really do it when they're like in their 70s or 80s. It's mostly 40 to like 55. People are like, you old fucking piece of shit. And you're like, this is just the middle. Can I just chill? <laughs> this is just the middle of my life, dude. Hey, can you relax? Stop fucking busting on me and let me be 40. 40 is the shit, though, really. God, you're ne people are the funniest when they're, when they're in their 40 for real, dude. Like, imagine a fucking 20-year-old tri tripping. Imagine a 30-year-old tripping. Okay, fine. Could be funny. 40-year-old tripping? Forget it, dude. You pack up. I got to sit the fuck down. I'm laughing for a long time. 50-year-old? Also funny. Not as fun as 40 because that's when the sadness creeps in. Because that's when, the, ooh, ooh, is he going to break a hip? Hit? You know what I mean? 60? No. If you... 70 of you laugh at someone falls, you're fucking, you're, you're Satan. You can't laugh at a 70 and up guy falling. 40, that's it. A little bit fat, that's it. A 40, a little bit fat, not even fat, but like big guy who would be like, nah, it's just, I'm, I'm big bone. Like a guy who would be like, I'm big bone. And also like gets pink when he starts running a little bit and he falls and has fluffy hair. Forget it, dude. Forget it. That's the end of the week. Whatever day that happens, even if it's Monday, that's the end of the week. Let's start again. Monday. Here we go. Unbelievable, dude. But we talk real shit. But we talk real shit. Um. Yeah, but so Kodak Black did sex in a box seat, and then everyone put the internet video, put the video on the internet from across the way, and then they shot somebody shot video in inside the box, and he wasn't actually doing it, but it looked like he was doing it doggy style or whatever the fuck, five tire style, and um, and uh, then they, he was just kind of like bouncing on her instead of not doing it, instead of doing it doggy style, and the word got out, but I guess apparently Twitter blew up about it. I don't know. But the internet was going nuts about how, hey, Kodak Black is having sex with the girl in the box seat, and it wasn't happening. So that's the thing, Kodak. You got us again. You got us once again. You had you, America. You got we got had, huh? Um. So yeah, so I did. Uh, so I've been watching a lot of TV. I watched the Shark Tank thing. I can't stop watching Shark Tank. Shark Tank is one of those shows that fucking pisses me off as much as it does how good it is. It's a good show. It's so watchable and it's so easily consumed. You could just consume the shit out of it. It's like eating bacon. You're just like, yeah, but maybe one more. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like if I could put two Shark Tank episodes on at once and watch them both and have my eyes be like that fucking, uh, that weird guy in the Frankenstein movies, I'd watch both. Um... And uh, I just fucking that whole in my head all day long. I've been watching it for like a week and a half, and just yin dun 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 yin dun 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 dun. Wang Craig believes he can revolutionize yin dun 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 shing dun. It's always like some small ass idea that we're like, oh fuck. Craig revolutionized drinking alcohol. It's a belt loop that converts into a cup holder. Ying ding 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 ding. All right, Craig, what are you looking for, Mister Wonderful? Because remember, money doesn't money doesn't sleep. Just already with a coined thing. The thing I love about money is it's not your girlfriend. Okay. Yen ding 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 ding. The thing I love about young. The thing I love about money is. You know what I love about money? It has more hair than me. Yang dang 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 shing dang Wong. Craig's looking for a steak. 50% for $50 billion for for fucking for a cock ring. Yang dang 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 ding ding. Hi, I'm Craig. Hello, sharks. I'm Craig. 
And I would lo- I'm looking for a 30% stake in my 50% company. And I would like 12, $12. And what happens is, yeah, sure, there's cock rings out there, but not like this. Let me show you. What you do is you take the ring and you unplug it and then you put it in your balls right above your shaft. And there it go. Oop. And there it go. Oh, ahaha. Ha. You know what I like about cock rings? It's not just for yang dang, psh, yang dang, wrong. And then the sharks, the hammerheads swimming over the fucking building. When we come back, where are we? So he offered, Damon offered. Offered fucking cock rings is not necessarily a business I want to get into. So for that reason, one time when I was younger, I used a cock ring and it caught and there was a lot of blood. So for that reason, I'm out. Yang dang, 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 Tired of regular cock. Hi, I'm, or it's always like some, hi, I'm, the, the one, the ones I don't get it at all are the fucking clothing lines. Who's investing? Like, it's just another clothing line. And then, like, the girls will always try to backdoor it in, you know? They're like, so, hi, it's Lisa. So, shing, ding, 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 shing, ding, wong. Lisa and Tammy are looking for a 20% stake in their company, pregnant lady shirts. Ying, ding, 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 ding. Hi, hi, sharks. I'm Lisa. And then Tammy's like, and I'm Tammy. And today we're launching pregnant shirts together. Ying, ding, 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 ying, ding. And there's always that one dude that's real creative with it. So here's what I'll do. I'll give you fucking seven times what you ask. But but can I put the shirts in my anus? Ying, ding, 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 ying, ding. Wong. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. You're asking for 30 grand. I'm going to give you $15 million. Can I eat the shirts and will you wait here till I shit them out? Yen, den, 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 den. Sharks over the building. And then they come back. Sh- sharks over the building. So can I eat the shirts and will you wait? We got to do the recap, you know? Like we're not, we're idiots not watching. First of all, everyone's watching it on Hulu. And if they're not, we remember there were two fucking Charmin commercials before I fucking. So two sharks are out. Because they're just fucking t-shirts and these ladies are trying to backdoor it in by using pregnancy. When I was pregnant, I noticed that there were shirts, but none of them would fit. Yeah, so what we did is we designed a shirt that's a little bit fatter in the fucking belly. Do you have any sales? No. Well, okay, how's it a business? I made shirts, though. Yang yang ding yang ding. Fucking Mr. Wonderful eating shirts, trying to shit them out. You know what I love about these shirts? They don't give you a stomach ache. Ying, ding, 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 <laughs> ding, ding. But that's the great thing about fabric. You can shit it out in three in under three hours. It's like going to. It's like you eat a shirt, you go to Vegas, you get there, you use the toilet. Ding, 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 ding. You don't even have to stop. Ding, ding. You shit out fabric in the mirage. <laughs> You can shit out a whole shirt by the time you get to Excalibur. Yen den 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 yang. You're on the roller coaster in New York, New York, and you're putting out a fucking cape. Yem dem dem dem. Mr. Wonderful on a fucking on the New York, New York roller coaster, shitting out a fucking pregnancy shirt, a, a, a pregnancy shirt on the back end, screaming out, I invested $14 million. Dude, and that's the motherfucking shit I am talking about. I want to get on that. I want to get on that show. Why is Kevin Hart on it? Hey, Kevin Hart, you're done. Pack up. You did it. You're done. Why are you? Hey, Kevin Hart, spend time with your kids. Why are you on Shark Tank, dude? What's going on? You know fucking Kevin Hart did Shark Tank and The Rock was like, some bitch beat me to it. You know. You know 100%. So pissed off with the eyebrow up at home. God damn it. In his tank top, just sweating profusely on the couch. After fucking talking about Hawaii too much. You know. Um, After talking about mana or whatever it is. By the way, how what's the over under? How long do you think until fucking uh, The Rock comes out with an energy drink or a power drink? that And it's called like mana energy or some shit. How, how long? How long do you think? How did it not happen yet? What's mana? Is mana the thing? You don't know? Ma- wow, he doesn't know what I'm talking about now. Now, this is the thing. 
I think that's the mana is the Hawaiian meaning. What is mana? Here, look. In some Polynesian languages, the literal meaning of man uh, of mana is thunder, storm, or wind. Yeah, dude. How is there? How has the rock? When? When is the rock going to come out with a mana energy drink? Because that's happening. Anyway, uh, Kevin Hart's on shark, fucking Shark Tank, and that's hilarious. So uh, you know what they say about that. Yen ten 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 yen ten young. So. Uh, I want to be on Shark Tank. I don't just every every time they come in. I I don't have the money. I, I don't have the same amount of money you guys have. I think maybe maybe I'm out. Yen ten ten a sad one. Yen ten ten ten. Yen ten. Yum. I only I don't know. I had a rough year. Yen ten ten ten. <laughs> <laughs> It sales always uh, drop at the end of the month for me because it's Patreon. Yeah, you know what I like about Patreon? Um, yeah, dude. So, uh, what was I saying? The fucking thing about those guys, dude. They have so much fucking money, and then also I like how the guy who doesn't invest much, he has three hundred and fifty million dollars. Everyone's a billionaire except for the guy on the end. And he's just like, I only have three hundred and fifty million dollars. He loses. He loses. Robert. The fucking one on the end with the fucking uh, what do you call it? The uh, the 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 beaker that's the color of his skin. I always know when somebody has a beaker on their face. You can't hide it just because it's not brown. What the fuck? The the birth beauty mark or whatever the fuck. If you're gonna have a beauty mark, dude. If what I call him a beaker. If you're gonna have a beaker, make the shit brown, dude. Don't make it clear. Those are the worst. The clear beakers. Dude, and I say beaker, and I've been saying this as a little kid because when I was a little kid, a beaker is a raised beauty, is a beauty mark. It's like a fucking, not a freckle, it's raised. What do they call them? Fucking, what, what, beauty mark? Is that what you call them? Juan? Yeah, beauty mark. All right. Well, I call it a beaker. And as a kid, when I was a kid, I, I just thought they were called beakers. Like, I just, I don't know. It was just like, it, it was already in my vocabulary. I never learned it. Nobody ever called it a beaker. <laughs> kid and i was talking about it with my mom and i was like oh man mama i have so many beakers and she was like what the fuck is a what and i was like a beaker and she's like what's a beaker and i started pointing them on my arms and she's like she started laughing she was like you mean beauty mark and i was like yeah beaker and she's like where'd you learn that i said i don't know it should be called a beaker dude and so that's what it is so if you're gonna have a beaker i hope it's brown man a lot of people with those fucking translucent beakers out there get out of here man have a zitter a fucking beaker don't make that shit the same color as your skin I did a show. I did a show with Brendan Schaub, and uh, we did it in. Uh, it was Brendan Schaub at Friends at the Improv, and it was awesome. Here's the thing: I was watching. Um, I was in the. What do you call it? Uh, I was. I was. What am I trying to say? I had. I w I did a podcast last week, and in the middle of my podcast, Kristen said she was bringing Calvin to a movie, and that I should come. And I ended the podcast, and I had to get to the Improv. And I couldn't make it. I'm like, babe, I, I don't want to do that. And I'm upset because I want to be there for Calvin's first movie. And she was like, well, I'm with him out and I never really get time to like, kind of like de-stress and unwind. So I'm just going to go see the movie. And I was like, I would really appreciate it if you don't, you can do anything else. I want to be there for my son's first movie. And she was like, well, we're already inside. Anyway, I was like, okay, you know, I don't want to make a thing out of it. But I was upset, swallowed it. And I, um, and then I, and then I, I, I had to get ready for the show. And then I went to the, to the, uh, get my coffee as I do. I do my thing. I fucking get in and I do my, uh, I, I, I do my routine. You know, I went to the coffee bean. I got the coffee. Actually, I think I went to the fucking Starbucks even, but I went to Starbucks and I went to the improv. And when I went to the improv, I was, uh, you know, I, I kind of was thinking about my son watching the movie. I was like, I hope he has a good time, but I was still kind of bummed out. And I got into the green room at the improv and I hear that that and calvin's there and i just everything just melts away i'm not bummed out anymore i'm not upset and Kristen's a hero and he's just that 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 and he runs to me gives me a big hug and calvin's in there and i almost start crying and i i put it on my other youtube channel uh more chris uh more chris D'Elia, and it's uh on the it's the pre-show with chris it's called and um 
my face, even the side of my face, you can see like how emotional, dude, I fucking, everything else fell, fell away. And it was the first now, instead of seeing my son's first movie, it was my first, the first time my son was going to see me on stage and I was going to be hanging out with him in the green room with my other people who still, you know, look, it's been a fucking weird two years for me to say the least. And the other comedians on the show that were still fucking rocking with me and that, that, uh, in the face of fear still support me, um, is just, was such a beautiful thing, man. And that, you know, to think that my career used to be the most important thing and now it's not, my family is the most important thing. And now I'm at this show and my family's there in with two of now the most important things. It was just too much for me to even handle, dude. It was just so emotionally, uh, amazing. And I was nervous for like the first time in a long time. Besides the first time I came, I came back, I started to do stand up. I was a little nervous, but dude, to have, I was like, Calvin's not even two. And I'm nervous for this person to watch me because I want him to fucking like me. I want him to like me. And it wasn't like, I want him to think I'm funny. Like he doesn't even know what the fuck I'm saying. As a matter of fact, I went on stage and he was just like, da, 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 da. He was so confused. And Chris was like, shh, shh, shh. He watched me for 30 seconds. Then he was like trying to run around. And she was like, be quiet, be quiet. And then just put on something on the phone for him to watch. I'm like, people buy paid tickets for this shit. I told him she should just put my specials on. That would have been funny. Because no matter what, if it's on that phone, he'll just zero in on it. But it was such a beautiful thing, man. You can go watch that video on, on the More Crystalia channel, uh, the uh, pre-show with Chris. And... Uh, yeah, it was just fucking really wild, and I love it. And I just loved that moment, man. And I loved that moment. It's just so much. It's so much feeling, you know? It's crazy to be a person, period, actually. It's so much if you let it be. You know what I'm talking about? Like, that's why I say life rips. It's like, it. It. it's so, It's. it really is a feeling of, what you let it be, right? Like I could have, the old me would have walked into that green room. Now I didn't have a son, right? The old me, the the unaware sleepwalking through life guy w didn't have a, it wasn't when I had a son, but the old me would have, wouldn't have necessarily stopped and thought about that and taken that in. I wouldn't have allowed it because it was too much feeling, right? I talk about how I don't like music a lot because it's artificially making me feel these emotions. And that's what life was to me. It was, you're not going to make me feel that way. I choose how I feel. But if you're doing that, then how much of the life are you living? Right? Like nobody wants to be around all day and cry at every fucking waking moment. There's a lot of sadness in the world, but there's also a lot of happiness and you need to feel all of that to be a person. If you're not, then you might as well be in the metaverse and have a jerky fucking fox head right? You might as well, because you're not really living. Life is as much feeling as you let it be, and as much as you let it take in. Because, man, having my son there in that green room, having my son there knowing that he was watching his dad do his job. For him, too, you know? Like, I actually do it it was the reason why I went back on stage. It's because of him. I didn't, you know, I checked out. I was in a bad fucking place, man. I did not want to, uh, you know, there were weeks and months at a time where I didn't, I was like, fuck it, dude. So many people threw me on the, under the bus. Fuck them. I'm not doing stand up anymore. That's not a community. I'm not in that community. I don't want to be in that community. Fuck that. I don't want to be in that community. You know? The world has a certain p a, a, a opinion of, of, of me or whoever the fuck has an opinion of me or whoever the fuck it is. Uh, you don't know who I am. And there was a long time where I just wanted to give up. And the only thing that made me get back on stage at certain points was my son's going to be 20 one day or 15, whatever the fuck it is of a mind to ask me, oh, hey, dad, you used to be a comedian. And I would have to say, yeah. And he would say, well, why don't you do that anymore? And I'd, I'd have to say a version of, 
I let the world get the best of me, or I let people say and believe that I'm something that I'm not. And I gave up. And when it comes to my son, that's just not an option. Um, so yeah, so that's what, that's what that means to me, having him there. And that's what that means to me, having him there with all the people that I love and still love, uh, whether that be, you know, Brendan Schaub, Theo, Craig Conant, Chappelle Lacey, Eric Griffin, you know, and I'm just naming some of them, but, you know, and my fiance and Calvin, who, uh, who knows me? Um, I love you motherfuckers. But that was a nice special day that I had no idea was coming. You know, sometimes you have special days because you're ready and sometimes a special day just hits you over the side of the fucking head. That's what that was. <clears throat> I didn't mean to get so heavy. Speaking of heavy, I want to talk about this, about uh, Bob Saget, man. Um, it was just, you know what the crazy thing about Bob Saget? First of all, Bob Saget, he was... He was a great guy. I knew him a little. Um, always was smiles and made you feel like when you're talking to him, he was, you were the, you know, one of those people, that, oh, you, oh, okay, this is Bob Saget, you know, but when I was a younger comedian, he, he treated me like uh, a person, which doesn't always happen with uh, bigger comedians. And um, he, We, we, we had a, um, a conversation once that, um, where we disagreed about something and I walked away feeling, um, so taken aback by how he, how he handled it, you know, um, it was by no means an argument or anything like that, but it was just. It was something that I realized afterwards, if it were someone else, and if it was someone else with any sort of agenda, it could have been such a weird thing, but he made it so comfortable by being a great guy about it. And it wasn't, he wasn't being a great guy. He just was a great guy. He, it's so sad to see him go because of that energy that he brought to the world. Um... You know, whether it be on TV or making you laugh or just, even if he wasn't Bob Saget, you, he would be one of those guys that would be in the room and you'd be like, oh, that guy. Oh yeah, that guy. Oh, I fucking like that guy. Like that's, that, he radiated that. Really, he really did. And he was one of those guys too that like, it's going to be a little bit weird to not have him in the world. Like he's been around ever since I can remember and he was 65, which is young. And you just, he seemed like a guy that was just going to be 95, you know? And in 30 years, you were going to be like, that was, Hey, yeah. Bob Saget had his run, but he died too early. And it's such a shame, man. It really is. You know, I didn't know him well, but. I knew him and I hope this is coming across the way I want it to because he just, I don't know. I, I just, I think he was a, as special guys go, I think he was a special guy. He had a lot of friends and I've been texting with a lot of them, you know, reaching out saying, oh, hey, I, I know this is close to you. I'm sorry. And uh, yeah, they're all saying how horrible it is. You never heard a bad word about Bob Saget. But um, anyway, yeah. I don't know how long I've even done this podcast. Do I have to do it enough time? 
Maybe I should do this one more thing. I'm going to... Total? Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. Well, I guess we could end. I had that cool mode D wrapper thing. I could do that next time. Actually, that's a good thing to do next time. Um, all right. Well, that's that. We'll end on that. Rest in peace, Bob Saget. You were a legend, you know? Wow. You were a legend in only 65 years. How about we'll say that? That's pretty amazing. So that's that. That's the podcast. Thanks for listening. If you want, sign up on our Patreon, and uh, we really appreciate you support the show. If you do that, we keep on bringing the show and making the show, and you can go to crystalia.com for the new Life Rips colorway, and the Go Medium is sometimes Stay Out or the Sorry Strong Guys merch, and you help support the show. We love you. Join us on Fli on uh, Twitch, Flex Avenue, and subscribe and like, and also leave comments for the algorithm, make, make friends in the comments. You see somebody talking shit, you make friends. You say, let's go to Red Robin. Hey guys, that's the episode for today. Uh, we are uh, done here on YouTube. If you want the rest of the episode, the extra, epi the extra uncut version of it, go to Patreon. That's patreon.com slash Chris There's a lot other uh, of other stuff. There's a, an extra episode a month. There's also another segment we do called review mode and uh, we've got behind the scenes stuff and we're actually adding some stuff. So uh, go on over to patreon.com slash crystalia. No ads, no commercials anywhere. And uh, we'll see you there. Bye-bye. Pump, 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 pump.